Rob here. In this video, we're going to be looking at Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation and how it relates to convergence. So, as part of the syllabus, we've got to look at the impact of digitally conversion platforms. This will link to Clay Shirky's theories about the idea that the internet and digital technologies have had a profound effect on the relationship between the media and individuals. We particularly have to look at how technological change has affected the production, distribution and circulation of video games. The impact of new digital technologies on media regulation, not that relevant for this video, but we will talk about another one. And how digitally conversion media platforms and how that has had an impact on production, distribution and circulation of video games. Now, in media studies, the term convergence has two distinct meanings. There is institutional or industrial convergence and there is technological convergence. The word convergence literally means to converge, to come together. All right. Now, in an institutional context, institutional or industrial context of convergence is that that's what forms conglomerates. Either companies merge with one another, or one company buys out other companies to make a bigger company. So, convergence is what creates conglomerates. But we're looking at a different term for convergence. We're talking about the convergence of technologies, the coming together of information and communications technology. This term was first coined by David Butler in 1978. In terms of our key theorists, Henry Jenkins also talked about this convergence culture, but he referred to it as the black box. So a convergence device is a smart device, we might call it now. Your smartphone, your tablet, phablet, games console, smart TV, your smart speaker, whatever. These are convergence devices. But we sort of call them the black box because hey, they're often box. They're often box, they're often black, and essentially they do more than one thing. It supplies us with all of our ICT and media requirements in one device. So, I like this meme. All of these 1980s technologies, camcorders, boombox, Sony Watchman, Walkman, uh, Hi-Fi system, a word processor, calculator, this is a video via VCR video cassette recorder. Um, I think it's a Betamax one actually. Um, VHS is the other one. They've got some audio cassettes down there. All of these things are now a device that you can put in your pocket. A smartphone, which does this and many things that people in the 1980s never even imagined were possible. So when the PlayStation Vita came out, it was at the beginnings of when we started to see smartphones. Mobile gaming had been a big thing ever since, well, I mean, there's mobile games going back years, little sort of like LCD pocket gaming devices. But, you know, we're talking really about the, the Nintendo Game Boy, the, the daddy of all mobile gaming consoles. The PlayStation Vita was the success for the PlayStation Portable, the PSP, which was Sony's answer to the Game Boy. All right. So it was an attempt to tap into the increasing success of mobile gaming at that time. Smartphones pretty much killed off things like the PS Vita, sort of tablets, but they were a big deal back in the day. The PlayStation Vita was designed with many features associated with smartphones. It was touchscreen. It could connect to Wi-Fi, it had 3G, and Bluetooth capability. You couldn't use it to make phone calls, but it did many of the other things that a smartphone does. You could connect to the PlayStation Store, so you could download music and films and games. There was a web browser on it. You could you could talk to people if you had a headset, but not like in a telephone, it'd be more like in a you know a more voice over internet protocol kind of way. You could message one another. You had your friends. You could link it to your PSP. So your PS4, I should say. You could you listen to music on it. You could take photos. You could do email. 
had a calendar. So many of the different things you'd associate with a smartphone. So it was very much a smart device that went beyond just simple gaming. Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation was specifically seen as an attempt to bring the high game production values of a well-known and popular franchise like Assassin's Creed to the burgeoning new mobile gaming arena. So the graphics and the gameplay on a PlayStation Vita were not dissimilar to that of a PlayStation 3. They were pretty much equivalent. The, 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 gra the quality of the graphics on the PlayStation Vita was not a million miles away from that of the Play PlayStation 3 and was far superior to that of, you know, the Nintendo devices it was competing with. So it was perhaps aimed more at the more... In many ways, portable gaming is seen as something that appealed more to casual gamers rather than having a, a main games console. But equally, it was the PlayStation Vita was perhaps more of a hardcore gamer's portable gamer games console rather than, say, like a... A Nintendo DS was. So, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, again, exclusive to the PlayStation Vita, but this is in 2012, remember, but in 2014 was ported as a HD remaster across PS3, Xbox 360s, and Windows. Basically, anyone who wanted a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation Vita by that point already had one, so there was no point in it being a exclusive anymore. Now, even in those days, gaming online was becoming a bigger deal. Buying games online was becoming a bigger deal. So whilst bricks and mortar retailers like Game or HMV were still probably the main player back in those days, things like Steam were becoming more popular as broadband was getting faster. So, obviously, you weren't buying Assassin's Creed Liberation off Steam to play on your Vita. You had to buy that on a cartridge or from the Sony store. But if you wanted to play it on a PlayStation, turn it on a PlayStation, I apologise, on a PC, there you could get it from Steam. Or Xbox Live Arcade as well, or PlayStation Network if you were playing on a PlayStation. So, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, handheld game. It could be linked to Assassin's Creed 3 on the PlayStation 3. So if you had both versions, it would unlock additional game content, extra layers and things like that that you couldn't do if you were only had one or the other. So that's one of the key, what we call killer applications, one of the unique selling points, as Russell Reeve would call it, of having both consoles. You could play layers, levels that you wouldn't be able to play if you only had one console. This was considered an attempt to draw gamers from different platforms into purchasing the other hardware. If you were only a casual gamer and you wanted a PSP, you might be persuaded to buy a PlayStation 3 as well, so you could play the big version. Equally the way around, if you normally didn't buy portable gaming consoles, the ability to have your favourite Assassin's Creed games on a portable format might have been enough of a draw to make you go and buy one. So this use of convergence is relevant in terms of the promotion, marketing and circulation of the game. It's also convergence in the fact that both consoles work together. You could, if you had a, a PlayStation Vita, you could connect it to your PlayStation 3 and then play your Vita games on the PlayStation 3 on your telly in your living room if you wanted to. Again, as we said before, downloadable content was a good way to get people to buy your game. This is the Voodoo pack for Liberation HD. It was on the PC. So if you bought it from Assassin's Creed.com rather than somewhere else like Amazon, you got a Voodoo dagger, a pirate sword, a poison dart pouch, and a gunpowder pouch as a downloadable content, as an extra. Plus things like skins and outfits that were exclusive to that particular version. Just a way to persuade you to buy your game from one vendor or another. Now, one thing that this also introduced was multiplayer gaming. Online multiplayer gaming. So you didn't just have a story mode as you played on your own, but you could play it multiplayer online. These features promote gamer engagement and identification with the game. This is interesting because 
as of the 4th of July. Um, literally only a few minutes ago, I learned that Ubisoft are going to pull online support from older games. So it also takes away your DLCs. And this is for a number of their AAA franchise titles. This includes the multiplayer linking accounts and online features of Assassin's Creed 2. Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. So they're getting rid of the multiplayer linking accounts and online features of Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation and their downloadable content. And Assassin's Creed 3 is losing the same stuff as well, including all the online features. And that's not just for Assassin's Creed, that's Anno 2070, Driver San Francisco, Far Cry 3, Princess of Persia of Forgotten Sands, Cell Out Hunter 5, Space Junkies, and Splinter Cell Blacklist. So, as of 2022, they're killing off a load of that online stuff. Presumably because no longer that much of a market for it. So, hot off the press, latest news. Nonetheless, back when it was originally released on the Vita, in 2012, multiplayer mode was considered quite the selling point. As I said, the two versions of the game are linked in terms of their downloadable content and special features. That again was trying to change patterns of consumption, get people to buy both versions. So the idea was that in order to have a more complete or satisfying experience, you had to have a range of interlinked products that offer exclusive downloadable content. This was only made possible through conversion technology and gamer buy-in to the value of the exclusive content. In other words, gamers had to think that having both was worthwhile. They had to buy into the concept, both figuratively and literally, because you had to fork out money for both versions of the game and you had to buy an entirely new games console. Now, we've been talking about Ubisoft, but what about Sony? Right? How does technological convergence affect Sony? Well, it's a big deal for Sony of all companies. Right? The PlayStation is vital to the success of Sony as a conglomerate. Um, I can't find any more recent figures for this, but as of 2017, PlayStation 4 accounted for almost a third of Sony's profits. So video gaming is a massive deal for Sony, which are an enormous company. If we look at Sony's organizational structure, you can see that they are a cross-platform, cross-media brand, right? When we tend to think of Sony, we tend to think of them more as a technology brand, right? They... You know, you might remember the Sony Ericsson mobile phones were a big deal. Not so much anymore. But we tend to digital imaging products, cameras. Sony make cameras, right? They make film cameras. They make, as I said, motion picture cameras. They make digital SLRs. They make pocket snap and shoot cameras. We tend to think of them more, though, as a technology brand that makes things like TV and Blu-ray players, DVD players, Sony invented Blu-ray, it's one of their, it's their personal technology. So they make, you know, the, the Sony Walkman, portable hi-fi, you know, they still make the Sony Walkman, but it's aimed more at your audiophile, kind of like people who want the highest possible sound quality rather than the sort of like the casual audience who now just listen to music on their phone instead. But not only do they make the hardware, but they make the software. Sony Motion Pictures is a film production studio, so they make movies, they make television, they have all sorts of, so they've got TV networks, they have got record labels, so they both record and publish music. They have got their games service, so they've got them their entertainment services for games, so they make games, they distribute games, they've got the PlayStation Store, they make hardware, as, as in you know, the PlayStation, they make software. So they're a massive cross-media conglomerate. 
and there's a lot of synergy going on here and that doesn't include all the other stuff they do as well because that, that's been including banking and life insurance so sony are an enormous conglomerate with their finger in many different pies what's particularly interesting about them is how vertically integrated they are now in terms of the hardware they make lots of convergence devices these are 2012 era 20 14 era Sony products. What they want you to do is buy a PlayStation 4, buy a PlayStation Vita. PlayStation Vita games can be cast from your Vita onto your PlayStation 4. They want you to be using your Sony tablet and your Sony smartphone. They want you to be plugging your PlayStation 4 into your Sony television, which is connected to a Sony AV receiver which is connected to a Sony 5.1 surround sound system, right? You are going online to watch Sony movies and Sony TV shows on your Sony TV. So they want all these devices, ideally they want you to buy into a ecosystem as they would call it, you know, they're engendering a brand loyalty, yeah, surely. The argument is PlayStation games are going to work much more effectively on a Sony television because they're made with the same people. Now, I, there there are new there there will be newer ways that this works, but I don't think that there's ever been a better example of Sony synergy than the James Bond film Casino Royale. Now, this is a very old case study, but there's never been a better one since, right? Now, the company that owns James Bond, that has the distribution rights to James Bond, I should say, is United Artists. United Artists are a subsidiary of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM. MGM has just been bought by Amazon. So Amazon now part own the James Bond franchise as well as the entire MGM back catalog but back in 2012 I think it was when Casino Royale came out Sony owned MGM Sony had bought MGM for access to its back catalog of films so they could sell it on their newfangled blu-ray but it also gave them you know the rights to the distribution of the James Bond films and let's face it, the James Bond films are a license to make money. Right? You would have to be out of your mind not to want the James Bond franchise. So this is 2006 this film came out, I should say, not 2012. Now, if you watch Casino Royale, it is chock-a-block with Sony product placement. It's ridiculous, right? All the products that James Bond are using are Sony ones. James Bond has a Sony Ericsson mobile phone, a Cybershot, right? When he goes to Jamaica and he's looking through all the security camera footage, it's been stored on Blu-rays, which are a Sony product. All the TVs, all the laptops, all the computers, all the computer monitors in James Bond are Sony's. As I said, James Bond uses a Sony Ericsson mobile phone. The villain uses a Nokia, the big competitor in those days. Right? Now, you, as a member of the general public, are thinking, oh, James Bond's cool. If I have the same phone, phone as James Bond's got, maybe I'll be a little bit cool too. So you could buy a Sony Ericsson James Bond branded Cybershot camera, which came with James Bond logos and James Bond wallpapers and James Bond ringtones. But being a massive horizontally and vertically integrated company, not only did Sony pay, I think it was something like a hundred million dollars towards the production costs of Casino Royale, with another something like 70 million coming from Ford, because Aston Martin's owned by Ford, or the Range Rover, um, a lot of the car. Oh, these are where he's driving a Ford Mondeo around Jamaica 
and I think another 40 million came from Heineken, just so you can see him drink a Heineken. Nonetheless, silly amount of money in product placement, right? So Sony has spent a hundred million dollars making Casino Royale. They want some money. They, they want some advertising money back. So they're going to be pumping as much James Bond products into that film, Sony products into that film as possible, right? Not only that, the soundtrack album released on Sony Classics, right? The movie released on DVD and Blu-ray. Blu-ray is a Sony product. So when, as I said, in those days, um, Blu-ray was new, right? And Blu-ray players were expensive. In fact, Blu-ray players were the same price as a PlayStation 3, which is why I bought mine, right? And you could get a high-definition Blu-ray starter pack. So basically, it was the starter pack was a Blu-ray remote control for your PlayStation 3, so you didn't have to use the controller. And it comes with Casino Royale bundled into it. Next to it, we've got Casino Royale on, P on um, uh, USD, which was the video format for PlayStation Portable for PSP. So you could watch Casino Royale on your Sony PSP. There wasn't a PlayStation 3 game of Casino Royale, but they did do one for the sequel, Quantum of Solace. So down the bottom there, we can see a PlayStation 3 bundle, which is very similar to the one I bought, except I didn't have Spider-Man in mine. I have 300, uh, sorry, 300 um, Casino Royale and Black Hawk Down in mine, but a very similar bundle. So as you can see, the computer entertainment division is making video games and the PlayStation, both of which are cross-promoting James Bond. The Sony Pictures Home Entertainment is making the Blu-ray version and the USD version. The phone division is making a James Bond phone. The Sony Classics Record division is releasing a soundtrack album for Casino Royale. And the Sony Style division is bringing out James Bond branded Vio laptops, Cybershot cameras, briefcases, USB flash drives. This is Sony trying to squeeze as much money out of James Bond as possible. That is synergy. And it goes across their different divisions, their entertainment divisions, their electronics divisions, and their games divisions, and their music divisions. So a perfect example of how Synergy works in a conglomerate, if a very old one. In terms of PlayStation Vita, you've got your online PlayStation Store. There you can go and buy television shows and films and music. And you could watch Sony films like Baby Driver on your Sony PS Vita. You could buy music to download onto your PS Vita and use it like an MP3 player. So you could buy the Assassin's Creed soundtrack album and listen to it on your PS Vita. You could buy the Assassin's Creed film and watch it on your PS Vita. And as I said, the PS Vita could link to your PlayStation 4, so you could cat, you could play your PlayStation Vita games on via the PS4 on your big TV if you wanted to. So that's how convergence works for Sony, the other big player in the Assassin's Creed game. So it's not just about Ubisoft; it's about Sony because it's about the hardware, not just the software. All right, got any questions? You know where I am. See you in the next one.